It is unusual that there were par positive correlations with the VIX over the last few months. You know, normally as the market rises, you expect the VIX to be lower, as you pointed out. I, I think for the most part, this is where the Fed comes in, and I think this is where liquidity comes in. And I think that as the Fed has essentially nationalized the bond market, putting a floor under equities and supporting it, I, I think the VIX is less likely to be an indicator here, because I just think that there really is no place for the capital to go. And so ultimately, while you can protect your portfolio playing volatility, and we do think this is the season for it, historically it is, and this is a very unusual election season, if we can say so, then I, I think that probably VIX is the way to go. But I, I wouldn't use that correlation as necessarily a sign of danger. That's interesting. Uh, something to maybe keep in mind for the next few months, James. I don't know if you would agree with that, but I also wanted to circle back to some of your thoughts on these names that you see value in. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but everything from DocuSign, Beyond Meat, uh, OLED even, you know, tell investors who right now are looking for places to Alicia's point to put their capital why these are good places to be. The way we're making money going forward, short-term futures on volatility is important. The VIX is a medium-term volatility instrument, and that's why you don't see uh, a lot of upside there, but there's a short-term volatility instrument, UVXY, to play this volatility. As we come down and valuations start to go south, we see wonderful names in companies that are going to roar forward through this recession. Beyond Meat is the first one. Over 80% of not, excuse me, artificial meat eaters are not vegetarians. Uh, they've got a 69% year-over-year year, year growth, despite half the revenue source being locked out. And so when restaurants do open, this is going to explode to the upside. 88% of their business is coming from retail. I love Datadog. Everything is going to the cloud. Everything, everything, everything. Their revenue is up 87% year over year, 37% more customers. Uh, and they're getting 100,000 customers every single quarter. This is a company that's going to do well. The cloud is going to be critical to all businesses, and Datadog owns that. Yeah. I also like Zoom Communications, and we all know how powerful Zoom is. This is what Andy Grove used to call an inflection point in technology. We now know we can be productive working from home. We know we can be remotely working with other people. And Zoom is going to continue to roar. Four and a half time year over year revenue to $664 million. An incredible business. If this pandemic gets worse, Zoom gets better. If the pandemic goes away, Zoom is the preferred choice for efficiency. I also love yeah. DocuSign. $342 million in year over year revenue of up 45%. 61% year-over-year year growth on billings. This is a great company. Digitizing documents is something that we all know is coming. And then finally, any data, any information, any programming, any content, any entertainment we receive is going to come off of an LED display. An OLED owns this space. Mm -hmm. Average growth is 27%, 42% per year. These are the names we love. Uh, as we see volatility rising, we'll own that in the short-term contract with EVXY. And as we get pressure under markets, we want to own these James, things. James, James, uh, it's David Faber. I just had to jump in because, man, that is some momentum portfolio you've got there. <laughs> I mean, you are not afraid of, of multiples to sales that are, what, 50 to 100 times when I'm looking at Zoom. Aren't, aren't you taking risk off at all here? So here's how we do it. We have to be smart. And you want to buy low, sell high, right? Volatility has been at an all-time low. We've been building up our position. Not in the VIX. VIX is a medium-term volatility, but short-term volatility that has explosive growth. So we came into UVXY last week at around 19 bucks. We're looking good today. Uh, that compensates and pays for uh, the risk that we have to take on these equity names. Again, we have to make money year after year. These are names that are going to be higher next year this time. These are names that are going to survive this crisis. And despite valuations, we have to look at the explosive upside. Hmm. And every one of these names has explosive upside. Alicia, let me turn to you in, in kind of what uh, those names are replacing. I mean, the energy sector and what's happening in oil today is is not encouraging. Um, is there a way to kind of square that with the macro story, with the momentum story, or is that just a coincidence? So, look, I think there's some concern over the macro story, and in particular, the, the China tensions have been kind of rumbling along, rumbling along, and I think this is what we're seeing actually is an intention to ratchet up the tensions with China. And by the way, we know that tech is sort of uniquely exposed to that. But, in, in, you know, I, I'm so appreciative of James's enthusiasm. But I think when I think about how do you allocate a fresh dollar of capital today, ultimately, you want to see w what business growth is ephemeral and what isn't. And I think for the most part, you can pick through 
the, the, the load of the cloud and the software and the tech stocks to really get a sense of which businesses have been permanently changed forever and which got an ephemeral bump because of the stay at home economy. And I think what you're seeing here, what you saw in the last few weeks is the market is kind of sussing out that we are in an inflection point because we're gonna to look towards the next six months. We're not gonna look behind us for the past six months. Something to really keep in mind as you allocate going forward. All right, thank you both. Uh, really appreciate it today, Alicia.